Welcome to today's ServiceNow Express video blog post on the concept of change conflicts in the Jakarta release of ServiceNow Express. With Jakarta, you see a number of enhancements to the change management application. The biggest being around change conflict detection, which is powered by change scheduled. So how does this feature work? Well, the first thing you'll see is under your change management modules, you'll find a change schedule. This change schedule is a graphical representation of all your changes based on the planned start and planned end date. So if we come here and we look into the time frame, you're going to be able to pick your default filter. So I'm going to go ahead and go to today. And we can see we have a demo change to Apache coming up. If I hover over and click in to that demo change to Apache record, it'll take me to the actual change request that this is linked to. Here, we can see that this demo change to Apache is affecting the Apache configuration item and it's taking place over a four day period here. If I scroll down, I'll also see the affected CI's related list is automatically populated with that Apache affected CI. This comes from my configuration item. The next thing you'll note on the change management form is you have a new conflicts section. Conflicts allows you to detect if there's multiple changes occurring against a particular configuration item. In addition, it lets you understand if a configuration item is in a maintenance period, which is like a white list for when a change can occur, or if it's in a blackout period, which is the blacklist for when it should occur. So a valid change should occur inside a maintenance window. If it's outside, it'll throw a conflict and it should occur outside a blackout window. If it's inside, it'll throw a conflict. And here you'll see on the change records, you'll also find two fields for the conflict status and when the last conf conflict detection was run. Let's take an example and create an additional normal change against that same Apache CI item to see what happens. So here you'll note that the CI Plan start and planned end date are all required to run conflict detection. After I enter the information and target the same configuration item as my previous demo change, I'm going to go ahead and insert this change request record. In my conflict section, I can also go ahead and then check conflicts, and we're going to be able to see that the conflict check completed successfully. As you'll notice, the conflict status tells me there is a current conflict. It tells me when it was last run. And also it indicates that since there is a conflict, I need to check the conflict section. So I scroll to my conflict section and there I can see that there is a change already scheduled against this same affected Apache CI. I can understand the conflicting change record and quickly drill into it to make the necessary changes. As mentioned, Conflicts can be multiple changes occurring to the same CI in the same time frame, or they can also be a CI that has a maintenance window set and the change plan start and end is outside the maintenance window, or it could be a CI that has a blackout window set and the change plan start and end is within the blackout window. All three cases will lead to a conflict being detected. This helps you reduce errors and increase the maturity of your change management processes. Now, a quick note on the conflict detection. You notice that I quick I manually press check conflicts. Well, I can come into my properties by heading over to the system configuration page, finding advanced properties, and turning on the run conflict detection automatically after changes to CI, plan start or plan end date, or state occur when a change request is updated. So by turning this on, it'll automatically run the conflict detection every time one of those key CI conflict detection related fields changes. This prevents me from having to manually press the check conflicts button each time. However, in some cases you may not want the feature, you may not have it on your form, we will leave that off by default. So we mentioned that conflicts could be based off these calendars, these maintenance calendars being either in or out of blackout or maintenance. Once you type in change, you'll notice that you'll have a new modules for administration, blackout schedules, 
and maintenance schedules. So let's take an example of creating a maintenance schedule. And this is going to be a weekend maintenance schedule. So it should occur Saturday to Sunday. We're going to call this my weekend maintenance. And it's going to indicate that weekend maintenance should be only time allowed. We're going to go ahead and then pick what CI table do we like this to apply to. So we could do all configuration items if we want to by selecting configuration item. We could do all hardware items by selecting hardware. But I'll do a specific example and just pick computer. You can add an additional filter to what records should be able to be fall under this maintenance window. Maybe it's only a certain vendor's type of computer. I could put in a filter for that. But in this case, we'll apply to all computer records. For the time zone, I'll keep it with what my system time zone is in, in this case, US Pacific. I'm then going to go ahead and save this maintenance schedule. Now you'll notice it tells me, warning, there are no active entries in this schedule. And that's basically because so far I haven't yet really defined anything in the schedule. I've just defined the definition of, hey, there is going to be a maintenance schedule. I haven't defined when this takes place. So to define when the actual maintenance schedule takes place, you come here to the schedule entries related list and you create your new schedule entries. So this is gonna be, for example, my Saturday maintenance. We're gonna go ahead and select, we want to run this on every weekend, Saturday, Sunday. And you could pick an end date. We're gonna go ahead and repeat this maybe just till the end of the quarter or the end of the fiscal year when we know perhaps the regulation is going to change. And then I decide all day in this case because it's my weekend dates. I'm gonna go in and select free because we're doing maintenance and I submit. And just like that, I now have inserted my weekend maintenance that's affecting computer records based on this maintenance schedule. So if I now go and I go press create new I make a normal change and I'm going to do it on a computer such as Beth's IBM. And let's go ahead and set any start and end date that does not occur on a weekend here. And we go ahead and save this. Check for the conflicts. And you'll notice once again, there is a conflict. But this time it's because this computer plan change is not in the maintenance window because I define my maintenance windows to only be that Saturday Sunday combination. So just how maintenance windows, it's a conflict if it's not in the maintenance window, blackout schedules are the opposite. If it falls within a blackout schedule of the CI, it'll also throw that conflict. So this is a great way to get maturity into your change management processes by keeping an up-to-date CMDB so that you could set the CIs properly. This has been an overview of the change conflict feature in the Jakarta Release of ServiceNow Express.